I think Ford was was right that you you do want to be vertically integrated, not not to a silly degree, but you you do want to be vertically integrated. Um, you also also think it's good to combine uh, engineering and production. It actually, was really focused on what the customer wanted. What, what, what the customer needed. And Since 1903, when Henry Ford officially introduced the Model T, Ford has remained one of the most popular car brands globally. He was an innovator and one of the greatest entrepreneurs to ever live. And just like Steve Jobs, his company continues as his legacy. In 1914, Henry Ford released a statement in the New York Times confirming he would release an electric vehicle that would be cheap and practical. A story lost in history. Join us today as we explore the fascinating story of Henry Ford and how he would be proud of the new electric vehicle manufacturer Ford has become. Henry Ford was a farm boy that followed the American dream going from rags to generational wealth within his lifetime. He released his first electric vehicle over a hundred years ago. But before we understand why, it's important to understand how Henry Ford fell in love with engineering and electricity. Henry Ford was born on a farm in Dearborn, Michigan. He had eight siblings and was the oldest son. While he hated working on the farm, he was fascinated with the machinery. Recognizing his son's love for engineering, his father gifted him a pocket watch at the age of 12. A young Henry obsessed over its workings and within a few days could take it apart and put it back together again in minutes. This new skill gave him his first proper taste of entrepreneurship. He gained a reputation around the neighborhood for being the go-to guy when it came to repairing watches and clocks. If a watch was broken, Henry could fix it. He left home at 16 against his father's wishes to begin an apprenticeship as a machinist in Detroit. Several years later, after building a reputation as a talented and hard-working engineer, Henry was offered a position at the most innovative company in the city, the Edison Illuminating Company. It was here, whilst working as a night engineer, that his love for engineering would combine with electricity. At the time, it was the largest electricity company in America, using steam power to provide electricity to over a thousand homes in the country. His primary role was to fix the steam-powered engine when there was a problem. But if everything was working fine, he didn't have anything else to do, so he used his time wisely to learn everything he could about electricity and how it worked. Ford was promoted many times at the company and ended up as a chief engineer. His boss, the infamous Thomas Edison, recognized his genius and they would often discuss the latest technologies. Ford left the company with big dreams and would go on to start and then fail two times before eventually founding Ford Motor Company. Failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, and this time more intelligently, said the entrepreneur. Ford pursued his dream backed by investors and launched the Model T in 1908. It was an instant hit, and Ford was regarded as the most successful gas car producer in America. What most people don't know is, at that time, just 22% of the vehicles were gasoline-powered, 38% of automobiles in the U.S. were battery-powered, and 40% of automobiles were steam-powered. It's important to understand that there was no consensus on which technology would prevail and become widely adopted. It's almost like asking us today, in 50 years, which metaverse is going to be widely adopted? Some are popular right now, but in 10 or 20 years, it's almost impossible to be sure. Battery-powered vehicles had several advantages at the time. Electric carriages didn't produce any noise, exhaust, or smell. They had no gears, and compared to gas cars, they were easier to operate and had fewer moving parts that required maintenance or repair. Women were especially fond of electric vehicles because they didn't need to start with a hand crank or wait for the steam to heat up before driving. In 1914, the New York Times released an exclusive statement. Henry Ford and his old boss, Thomas Edison, had some news. The fact is that Mr. Edison and I have been working for some years on an electric automobile which would be cheap and practicable. Then following up with, the problem so far has been to build a storage battery of lightweight which would operate for long distances without recharging. Mr. Edison has been experimenting with such a battery for some time. The car would be released in one year and be known as the Edison Ford. People were excited. Ford had the track record of delivering the Model T, a gasoline car for the people, and expectations were high. The electric car used the Model T frame, suspension, and front axle a Model T steering wheel, and a worm drive rear axle. The motor was above the front axle with an additional battery pack. 
The car was rumored to cost between $500 and $750 and would go somewhere between 50 and 100 miles on a single charge. According to historians, Henry Ford even purchased an electric plant near Niagara Falls as well as land on Woodward Avenue in Detroit so he could produce the Edison Ford car. Thomas Edison was quoted saying, I believe that ultimately the electric motor will be universally used for trucking in all large cities and that the electric automobile will be the family carriage of the future, Edison said in an interview with the New York Times when being asked to provide an update on the release. The delivery date of the Edison Ford was delayed for two years and its eventual downfall came when the lightweight nickel-iron batteries Edison had designed simply could not live up to their promises. Edison offered an alternative lead-acid battery, but it was too heavy, and Henry Ford ended their partnership immediately. According to reports, Ford had invested $1.5 million, the equivalent of over $30 million today, in the Edison Ford car before the plans fell apart. At that time in 1917, the Ford Model T was the best-selling car in America, and Ford was focused on growing his empire, improving the production line, and establishing sales rooms that would later become his dealer network. Fast forward to today, and we see this ironic story has come full circle. The market for new and used electric vehicles is limited by supply, not demand. Used and new EVs sell out in record time, and there are multi-year wait lists for electric trucks. Electric vehicle adoption is moving at a much faster pace than anybody could have predicted. In 2018, the Boston Consulting Group predicted that by year 2030, 21% of total new car sales would be electric. They've updated this prediction each year. In 2022, they estimated that the EV market share for new cars would be at 53% by the year 2030, more than doubling their original estimate. In a recent interview with the Morgan Stanley CEO, Jim Farley was asked what Henry Ford would think if he could travel in time to 2022. Farley thought Ford would say, the last 75 years were empty calories and I'm sure glad I landed right now. Following up with, I think he would be absolutely built, wired for this moment and would love working at Ford right now. Jim Farley has accepted the mammoth task of transitioning the company into an electric vehicle manufacturer. Ford has committed $50 billion to achieve its goal of producing more than 2 million electric cars annually by 2026. That represents a third of the company's annual production volume and then they want to push it to 50% of production volume by 2030. Henry Ford's legacy continues to inspire the company today. His passion for innovation and his dedication to improving the production line are evident in Ford's efforts to transition to electric vehicles. America's second official billionaire after the oil tycoon John D. Rockefeller, Henry Ford was a capitalist with enough money to do anything he wanted to. Yet, he poured every waking hour into the company, trying to improve everything, including working conditions for his employees. His ethos was that a company thrives when its workers do well. He doubled his employees' salaries and reduced their working hours, which in turn reduced staff turnover, improved productivity, and also attracted all of the talent from his competitors. He was one of the first employers to offer paid holidays and even pioneered the willingness to hire differently abled people, including the blind, deaf, and those who had lost limbs. By the time he died, more than 20% of Ford Motor Company's workforce had some form of disability. He revolutionized an entire industry, and for that, he will be remembered as one of the true greats. Thank you for watching today. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to Velocity, and we'll see you next time.